What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. Since I'm a Halloween ends in this video here again today, David Gordon Green and Jamie Lee Curtis had some new comments that came out from an interview from Total Film via GameRadar.com. Uh, I'll kind of go over some of the more interesting quotes they had to say before diving into this aspect or this section where David Gordon Green talked about how they're not going to explain the absence of Michael Myers for the past four years and not going to where he's been in detail, I guess. Uh, so David Gordon Green said it's really exciting that they're going to be ending things. Uh, that's what he had to say to Total Film in the new issue of the magazine. And he said it's nerve wracking. I've I've moved around the last few scenes of the movie in various orders and I've been playing with with the music. How do I want to feel when I walk out of the theater thinking that there's not going to be another one next year? So that's the sculpture. So he wants you to be able to leave the, the theater, I guess, feeling complete. He goes on to say, if you walked out of Halloween Kills, the controversial sequel to the 2018 Halloween movie, uh, feeling brutalized and dejected, that was by design, but the intention isn't the same for Halloween Ends. That's an excerpt from this article from Total Film. David Gordon Green continued on to say, This is this one is a good time at the movies. Let's have a blast, ride the roller coaster with a few unexpected turns, and walk away feeling complete. That's what I want. So I'm going to get back to that going over uh, some other things here pertaining to the movie again related to that lack of explanation on his absence. So Jamie Lee Curtis had this to say about Laurie's role in Halloween Ends. She said that by the time you meet Laurie Stroll, she has gotten help. Uh, help to proceed or help to process the level of violence that has been perpetrated against her and her family. She's done the work. And there's a moment at the beginning of the movie where you actually meet Lori. I'm not going to say she's as innocent as she was back when she was a 17 year old girl, but she has a layer of hope about her. That's a beautiful place to start a really tragic, incredibly violent ending. So again, regardless if Lori Strode is out for revenge again, like how she should have been, I know in a lot of people's minds leading into what happened from kills into the beginning of the ends and so on and so forth in the same night. Even if she's going through this aspect of letting go of Michael Myers, I still think there's material there that's interesting enough for us to focus more heavily on this character and this memoir that she's working on and see that relationship between Allison. Corey can still be an aspect, but I wouldn't have a large chunk of this narrative focus on Corey the way it feels like it is. Um, I would have it focus on Lori and her role to forgetting about Michael and just flashing between that and Michael actually preparing to return to Haddonfield, do something like that. But, uh, Green said this about the Michael's about Michael's four year absence. He had this to say about the lack of explanation that's going to happen in this movie. He said, we don't really explain that. It's like, I don't want to see where Jaws goes to sleep at <laughs> sleep at night when I'm watching a shark movie. I want to see him when he pops up and he's got an appetite. Now, I'm paraphrasing some stuff there, but I saw a lot of you chime in when I shared this on Twitter. Like that comparison to Jaws doesn't really make sense to a lot of you. And it was like a, a very wild ex a wild comparison to make i guess but so off the rip again i know some of you are like well why do the time jump if you won't explain where he was because kills explain how he survived the fire and yes that is true we did see how he survived so why not continue explaining things this goes back to the argument of the time jump is unnecessary because yes we don't need to know how michael operates because that's what's part of the mystique but taking advantage of that to do an unnecessary time jump and then Try to justify the lack of explanation to, oh, well, we don't have to because that's just staying true to the character. It's like, OK, well, why do the time jump? Like, don't do things that are unnecessary just for the sake of doing them. Even though I know that's not necessarily the case until we see the movie. It's just like taking advantage of the fact that you want to live up to the mystique by doing this time jump and not explaining things. Come on now. Uh, I know a lot of you feel like that's a cop out because, <laughs> uh, again, if Corey Cunningham finds Michael Myers, I've seen people even chime in saying, well, why weren't the cops finding Michael? That is another valid question to have. But at the end of the day, not something I guess that's very major to the overall grand scheme of things. While I'm not expecting a concrete explanation of why Michael was gone for four years or where he was, it's definitely going to be implied without giving us an exposition dump. It seems Michael going off of the working title and the trailer was definitely living with rats in the sewers, similar to how Resurrection, if I'm remembering correctly, revealed Michael was living under the Myers home since the events of Halloween 2. Uh, there wasn't a lot of exposition to it but Buster Rhymes delivered a couple lines and we saw it seemed he was eating rats to survive in the sewers so they don't have to go into a complete backstory as to where Michael has been I don't really care about that what I don't want and I know what a lot of people might feel like is that 
you know, you're taking advantage of the fact that, hey, let's use the, the mystique of the character as a reasoning for why we're not going to explain where he was for four years to justify your time jump even further. When again, in a lot of ways, the time jump is unnecessary because I don't believe Michael is just going to return because it's Halloween again. If we're again going off of all the assumptions related to the narrative, if Corey Cunningham steals this man's mask, Michael did not return because it was Halloween again. He returned because somebody stole his mask and similar to how Karen stole his mask in Halloween Kills, when people have his mask, he goes after them. And we saw we saw that start up a little with him going after the reporters in Halloween 2018 before he went back to Haddonfield. Ultimately, doesn't seem like Michael, again, off of assumptions, is going back to Haddonfield because he wanted to because it was Halloween night again. Most likely it's going to have to do with the fact that his mask was stolen by this boy and he's going to go after said boy. And by coincidence, it just happened to be Halloween night because, again, that's relevant to the story. It's Halloween in. So why would it not be Halloween night? But we'll see what they ultimately end up doing. Again, I know some of you are like, well, they need to just explain where he was for the past four years. I don't think that's necessary as much. I don't think that's necessary just as much as I don't think the four year time jump is necessary because there is no reason to do this four year time jump. The only reason we've seen that as for why this time jump was done is because they came up with a new idea and decided that, hey, let's let's jump four years into the future, even though I've been told a section of this movie starts off in 2019, which I'm assuming is where Corey Cunningham's stuff happens early on with the kid. And then it's going to jump four years later to or three years later to 2022 to be in the current time. So we'll see what ultimately ends up happening. The four year time jump or lack thereof. I don't really care about it one way or another. I mostly think that the time jump was unnecessary, as I know a lot of you do. So him saying they're not going to go into it really isn't that much of a turnoff to me. But I know it's a turnoff to some of you. What would you like to be an explanation for where he was for the past four years? Because, again, it's going to be implied that he was living in the sewers. But what would you want if that's not enough for you? Let me know down in the comment section below if you're disappointed about that or if you really don't care. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.